So today we're going to be taking a look at the differences between A-level and B-Tech qualifications. The qualifications that we're going to be looking at are what's called level three qualifications. So they're the ones that you would go on to do after perhaps you'd um, done your GCSEs. GCSEs are level two and B-Tech and A-level and the ones that we're looking at specifically are those level three qualifications. One of the really tricky bits about deciding what to do after you've finished your GCSEs in year 11 is whether to follow an A-level or a B-Tech route. A-levels you might already know quite a lot about. You can do A-levels in a range of different academic subjects and typically speaking students would pick three to go on to study um, in year 12 and year 13 before then going on to apply for university. This is very much seen as the traditional academic route and the route that a lot of people used to follow if they wanted to apply to universities. In recent years it's become more and more popular that students are taking BTEC qualifications at level 3. Now these BTEC qualifications can look slightly different. There's the BTEC subsidiary diploma which is the equivalent to 1A level. Usually the BTECs are more vocational in nature and perhaps geared towards the worker and the world of work and employment. So you might see BTEC qualifications in things like sport or in business, uh, animation, graphic design, those types of general areas. The subsidiary diploma is just equivalent to 1A level. The BTEC Extended Diploma, on the other hand, is equivalent to three A-levels. What you would be doing when selecting the BTEC Extended Diploma is essentially just picking one subject that you really want to study in Year 12 and Year 13, and you would be assessed on nothing else. It's really good to do a BTEC, perhaps, if you've got a really, really strong passion for things like art and design, and with the BTEC you'd just be able to concentrate on that. However, with the BTEC Extended Diploma, you're just picking one subject rather than three, so you don't have the opportunity to learn more about a range of subjects when developing your interests, perhaps from what you did at GCSEs. Also, if you were doing a specific subject for your BTEC and you're planning on going to university, especially with the Extended Diploma, it makes it very, very difficult to change. Obviously, if all of your learning has been around art and design and you decide when it gets to the end of your second year of sixth form or year 13 that you want to perhaps do a psychology degree then it can throw up a few difficulties and you might find making that switch a little bit difficult it might be that you'd need to take perhaps extra qualifications after you'd finished your BTEC in order to get a place on the university degree that you'd like to study. There's an awful lot of debate around BTEC versus A level BTEC and A-levels are qualifications that have come from very, very different places. As I say, with A-levels, it was always seen as the traditional academic route that would get you to universities. When BTECs were first kind of conceived, they were considered as a strong vocational qualification, so ones that were linked a lot more towards the world of kind of work and a profession, perhaps, than going to university and studying. So that begs the question, are you able to get to university with a BTEC qualification? The short answer is yes. Yep, you are. If you study a BTEC qualification, you would be able to apply for university. It has to be a level three qualification, mind. You wouldn't be able to get into university necessarily with a level two qualification, but with a BTEC level three, either a subsidiary diploma combined with A-levels or an extended diploma, you would be able to apply to university. Of course, universities will have different entry criteria, um, so it might be for some universities you'd need 3D stars in your BTEC, whilst for others you might need a distinction and two merits, but you can apply to university with a BTEC. However, and this is quite a big however, universities look very, very differently at BTEC qualifications depending on the institution that you apply for. So, for example, if you were interested in studying at a post-92 university, universities like Wolverhampton, Birmingham City University, De Montfort, Nottingham Trent, then there's a strong chance you would be able to apply for those courses with just BTEC Level 3 qualifications, either the extended diploma or perhaps a bit of a mix between A-levels and BTECs. Russell Group universities are a bit of a different kettle of potatoes and the way Russell Group universities view BTEC qualifications isn't necessarily something that I believe is spoken about enough and this is one of the reasons why I thought it's really important to do this blog post. 
So with Russell Group institutions, quite often what they'll say is, yes, yes, of course, we do accept BTEC applications onto our courses. However, they might have additional criteria that they would expect you to meet alongside that. So if we take this example here, which is from the London School of Economics, what LSE say is for some of their courses, or most of their courses, they will accept BTECs. However, you would also be expected for some to be studying an additional A-level qualification alongside your BTEC. That might not pose too much of a problem if you're doing the BTEC subsidiary diploma, which is worth one A-level. However, if you're doing a BTEC extended diploma, which is worth three A-levels, you would still be expected to do an additional A-level on top. Personally, I think that this is a bit of an ask from the Russell Group Universities. For students taking a BTEC extended diploma, then they are very intensive and very work heavy courses. So the idea that students would have additional time to do another A level on top of their level three, for me, causes some issues or slight concerns. Another angle that Russell Group Universities might approach it from is to say, yes, we will take BTEC level three students who have done the extended diploma. However, we don't necessarily believe that the content that they've been taught is at the academic level that we require. So for BTEC students, what we would say is you would need to come to our university and do another year of university study first, what's called a foundation year. For a lot of students, this is a bit of a pain because it means that there's a good chance that they would have been told that they can get onto university with a BTEC Level 3 extended diploma, only to then approach these Russell Group universities at careers fairs and be told, actually, no, you've either got to study an additional A-level subject on top of your BTEC, or failing that, you will be expected to study an additional year at university in order to meet our entry requirements. Now, this doesn't strike me, to be honest with you, as particularly fair, and I wish the system wasn't like it. But unfortunately, it is what it is, and it's an approach that a lot of Russell Group universities will take. And that's fine, okay? That is absolutely their prerogative to do that. Like I say, it's frustrating for students who perhaps haven't received the right information, advice and guidance prior to that, but it's their entry criteria. What I don't necessarily think is as fair is how transparent Russell Group universities are about this process. So what I've got up here is an example from the University of Manchester and you can see what they do essentially is they colour code their BTEC entry requirements. So alongside every course in the prospectus they will have a little dot next to it that explains what would need to happen, whether that be that they would need to study an additional A level, whether that be that actually the BTEC just simply isn't suitable for the course, or actually, no, for this particular course that we offer, we accept BTEC students, no problem at all. And that's brilliant for me in the current system. That's about as good as you could expect from Russell Group Universities when it comes to BTEC students studying the course. However, let's take a look at the prospectus of the University of Warwick. Now you'll see there they've got their A-level qualifications listed and they've also got something called the IB, which is an international baccalaureate qualification. There's no mention of BTEC entry requirements or what students might need if they are currently studying a BTEC in order to go on to the course, but they mention the IB qualification, the international baccalaureate. So if you're anything like me, you think, wow, 100,000 students are accepted into university each year with BTEC qualifications. So for the IB to be up there as a qualification, then there must be loads of those students studying in the UK in order for that to be listed and so prominent within their prospectus, especially when the BTEC qualifications aren't. Well, no, <laughs> there is around 2,000 applicants each year with the International Baccalaureate qualification. However, most of the institutions where those types of qualifications are studied are grammar schools or independent schools. And the IB qualification is seen as synonymous with students who might have received education in those types of environments rather than perhaps large colleges in cities. That doesn't strike me as Fair. Why on earth would a Russell Group University put a qualification that 2,000 students a year study at the very top 
of their page when it comes to entry requirements, but not include BTEC qualifications at all. Simply no mention on that page of BTEC qualifications. To be honest with you, other than universities not wanting to be transparent, then I can't think of any other good reason why a qualification which 100,000 students each year took doesn't appear in the prospectus, whilst a qualification that 2,000 students a year take is very, very prominent. For me, it, it, it just doesn't make sense. This is something that universities need to do better at, and it's also, as people that are thinking of applying to university, something that you need to be aware of as well. And so there's a bit of a sea change in this. We noticed that University of Manchester outlined the BTEC entry requirements in their prospectus exceedingly well. Universities like the University of Birmingham are doing very, very similar things at the moment. However, it's not quite there yet. Unfortunately, if you're a BTEC student and you're studying, say, perhaps the extended diploma and you're thinking of applying to a Russell Group university, your best option is still to dig down into their website and see if you can find information about entry requirements or failing that, give them a call and speak to an admissions tutor. Because in some cases, it's still not that clear at all. So in conclusion, the differences between A-levels and BTECs are that BTECs are seen as more vocational qualifications linked toward particular careers or professions, and A-levels are seen as the traditional academic type subjects, the ones that would allow you to take the traditional pathway into university. If you're studying a BTEC qualification, it does not mean that you can't apply to university. You definitely can. Loads and loads and loads of universities all across the country welcome applications for BTEC students and recognise the talent and potential that they've got. Russell Group universities still have a lot of work to do in those type of areas. Like I say, you've got London School of Economics, Birmingham, Manchester, who are very, very good at communicating information to students who are studying a BTEC about their entry requirements and what they might need to do in addition. However, as illustrated, you've got other universities that are a lot, lot further behind. So it's something to, to keep in mind and be aware of if you're a student, alongside the fact that if you're studying a BTEC Level 3, diploma depending on the university in order to get a place you might have to do a foundation year or you might have to do an additional A-level qualification. Not for all institutions but for some. That's my 10 to 15 minutes for this blog episode up. I hope you found the information on the differences between BTECs and A-levels useful and I've managed to provide a little information about the differences in approach to BTEC students that some universities take. Okay, see you later.